okay, in this video, I'm going to show you the generalized form of where that reflection matrix comes from. So, what we've looked at already is basic reflections in the lines uh, y equals x, y equals minus x, the x-axis and the y-axis. But, if I want to look at a, the reflection in a generic line that goes through the origin, so let's say this line here, which makes an angle of theta with the x-axis, then that's a little bit more fiddly. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we build this matrix up. It's a little convoluted, so I apologise for that, um, and, but it should come through that this isn't just plucked out of thin air. So, what we're going to do first is look at how our point one zero has been transformed by this reflection, this line. So it would reflect so that it would now appear where that cross is. So if I now draw a line to the cross, to the origin, from the cross to the origin, then we should note that if that is angle theta, then this is also angle theta. And then I can create a right angle triangle with the base on the x-axis. Now remember what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find the coordinates of where this point has gone to. So where 1, 0 has been moved to. Now if this length was 1, then that length is also 1. And so, because of that, we can use basic trigonometry if the triangle has a base of length A and a height of B, then using trig, that would mean that sine of that whole angle, which is going to be 2 theta, is equal to the opposite, B, over the hypotenuse 1. So that means that B is actually sine 2 theta. Now... If I look at cos of 2 theta, cos of that angle, well, cosine is the adjacent A over the hypotenuse 1. So that means that A is just cos 2 theta. And so the coordinates of this point is cos 2 theta, sine 2 theta. And so we already know the first column of my reflection matrix, cos 2 theta, sine 2 theta. So that's the first part of the matrix that I'm looking for. Now, the second part of that matrix is a little bit more tricky. Okay, So what I find is that if I'm reflecting in that same line, and I'm now reflecting the point 0, 1, we're looking at this point being reflected down to here. So, if I now draw a line between those two points, like so, okay, actually, this diagram's going to get quite small, so I'm just going to remove that theta, we'll remember that it is theta there, okay, and I'm going to join up this with the origin, and I'm also going to consider that right angle triangle there. Okay? Now, if I call, as we know, that's theta, then this is a right angle there. Because they must be two perpendicular lines, this is the line um, that would be perpendicular to the reflecting line, because your image would reflect immediately back at you at right angles to the mirror. And if I call this angle phi, okay, so another angle, phi, then I can start to determine the coordinates of this point using some angle tricks. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be looking at is um, the, which way am I looking? 
I've got that angle there. So I can work out this angle down there if I want that one. Just need to keep checking because this is a tricky bit to do. Um, yes. Okay. So let's label a few things. That would probably be the best thing. If I call that point O, okay, O for the origin, and I'm going to call my new point P, and I'm going to call this point Q, okay, where it meets the x axis, because I want that x coordinate of Q, and I'm going to choose this point to be R, okay, that point where this line crosses the uh, reflecting line. Okay, so, um, what do I want to do? So, if I look at the angle um, ORP, or the triangle ORP rather, then really what I want to do is identify what phi is in terms of theta. So, what I currently have is a right angle triangle there, okay, and I can then say, well, this angle is going to be 90 minus theta. Okay, so this right angle triangle is quite small, so I'm going to redraw it here. This is theta, that's 90 degrees. I want that angle there. 180, take away the 90 is 90, take away the theta, so that's 90 minus theta. That's that angle there. Um, then I can work out this angle, because that's 180, take away 90 minus theta. So 180 degrees, take away 90, take away theta, is 90 plus theta. So that's 90 plus theta there. Okay, so what we have here is that this angle must be 90 minus theta. Okay, and that's a right angle there, so I can work out what that angle needs to be uh, by doing 180, take away that 90, take away the 90 minus theta, and so lo and behold, what I get is 180, take away 90, take away 90 is 0, and the 2 minus has become a plus, so that's theta. So this angle in the top left here is theta. So that means because this is isosceles, that would also be theta. So that now says that phi, well, these three angles must add up to 180. So 180, take away the 90 plus theta, take away the theta, would leave me with 90 minus 2 theta. So finally, I have phi. And that's really what I want because that opens up everything else. Because now, if I'm just looking at a right angle triangle, oh, I'm not going to draw it there, um, draw it here. This is the triangle OQP. And I now know that this angle is 90 minus 2 theta. And the hypotenuse is 1. What I can say is that if this is A and that's B, then sine of 90 minus 2 theta is equal to uh, the opposite, B over 1, so that's just B, so that's sine of 90 minus 2 theta, and then cos of 90 minus 2 theta is equal to the adjacent over 1, over the hypotenuse, which is just A. So that means that that length is cos of 90 minus 2 theta. Okay? But hang on a minute. Because cos of 90 minus 2 theta is exactly the same as sine of 2 theta. It's just a translation by that 90 degrees. So, cos of 90 minus 2 theta is actually just sine of 2 theta. 
and sine of 90 minus 2 theta is just cos of 2 theta. And so the coordinates of P is actually sine 2 theta minus cos 2 theta. And that gives me the second column of my, tr of my matrix. So I've got sine 2 theta uh, minus cos 2 theta. And so it's a convoluted method of trying to find the coordinates of P. There may be an easier way of doing it, but it was a little bit of a struggle to do it on the board. Um, but that is the matrix that gives you a reflection in the line. Well, what is the line? It's Y is equal to. Now, if that's theta, then what we're actually looking at is a reflection in the line y equals tan theta of x. Okay? Tan, remember, is opposite over adjacent. So, if you're looking at... Um, a line like so, and that's your angle theta. Then, if you just take a point there, that's your opposite, that's your adjacent. So, the gradient of that line is the difference, is uh, the opposite divided by the adjacent. But what do we know to be opposite over adjacent? Well, that's tan of theta, the angle. So it's tan theta x is the equation of the line that we are reflecting in.